Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about how to override the D365 SysOperation Framework Lookup. So in the past article, we looked at how to add parameters to a SysOperation Framework batch job. Um, parameters allow you to specify uh, different values. Um, up front and then use those values in a query um, that your batch job is actually running. Um, and oftentimes these parameters actually come with dropdowns um, that are tied to the extended data type. Uh, but then other times, if they don't, you need the ability to override what's called the lookup. Um, which is this drop down here to either show different columns, to filter the data in a different way, or just show the lookup altogether. So in this uh, video, I'm going to explain how you can do that. We're going to focus on this customer account, location, and warehouse parameter right here. Okay, so just as a quick recap, in order to create a sys operation framework, we really need three classes. We need a contract class, that ends in the word contract. We need a service class um, that has some kind of process method that says what this process is actually going to do, um, what this batch job is going to do. And then we need a controller class that really just tells the system um, what method on the service class it should run and fills in a, a few more things from here. So um, I've got other videos on how to create sys operation framework classes. I recommend you review those if you haven't already. But once you have your controller class, your service class, and your contract class, we're gonna look at how you override those parameter methods. So first, let's add um, a few method or a few parameters. So I've got one called cust account invent location ID, which is the warehouse, and WMS location ID, that um, is the location within a warehouse. And then I've gone ahead and I've added um, those three PAR methods as well. So in a previous video, we looked at what these attributes actually mean um, and how to add them, but essentially we need a PAR method for each one of those variables. We need this data member as well. Um, that's gonna allow the parameter to show up. So I've added one for customer account. I've added one for this warehouse as well as for WMS or PARM WMS location ID, otherwise known as the location within the warehouse. So once I've done that, that's really all I need to make the parameter show up on this dropdown. And if the extended data type associated with this PARM method um, has a relation to a table set up already, we actually get that lookup for free. So let me explain that a second. So if I look at cust account and I search for cust account and I find it in the extended data types and I open it up, there's actually something called a table relation that can exist on these base Microsoft um, extended data types. And this says that anytime this extended data types used, it relates to the account num on the cust table. And because of that, the dropdown will work automatically. Now, Unfortunately, we can't add these table relations to our own extended data types, to our own custom tables. So we always need to um, either set up a relation between tables to make the lookup work or override the lookup. And in the case of a sys operation framework batch job, there isn't a way to, over, uh, to have a table relation set up. So we need to override that lookup. But for now, we're just going to use these three base um, extended data types because you all have them. And in order to override the lookup, we need a fourth class called the UI Builder class. So um, go ahead and right click on your project, say add new item, and then select the class type. If I scroll up here and pick class and then give it a name that ends in UI Builder. So I went ahead and created this already. Mine is named RSM TUT. TUT is short for Tutorial Sys Operations UI Builder and add that to your project. 
This class needs to extend the sys operation automatic UI builder. So make sure you add that. The next step that we need to do is we need to add variables for storing each one of the fields that we want to add functionality to. So in this case, I'm creating a variable called dialog field and I'm calling it cust account dialog field. I did the same thing with invent location ID and then once more with WMS location ID dialog field. You can ignore these others for the time being. The next step that we need to do on this UI builder class is we need to add a post build method. Um, this is going to get called by the system and we need to add our own code to this method to make our functionality work. So the first thing we do is we need to make sure super is called and then we're going to add two lines of code per parameter. The first line is this line here. Let me see if I can make um, the text a little smaller so we can see this. And basically we take our variable cust account dialog field and we uh, have it equal to this dot bind info dot get dialog field. And then we pass into this method the name of our contract object called this.dataContractObject. You could assign this to a variable and then pass this in, but I find it a little safer to just um, call the method directly here. Then we need to give it the method that this parameter is tied to. So we tell it the name of our contract class. In this case, mine's called rsmtut sysoperationsContract. Make sure you replace this with the name of your contract class. And then we have parm cus table. So make sure you replace this method with the name of your method associated with this parameter. What this does is it basically gets um, the field on our sys operation batch job and give, stores a reference in this variable. So in this case, this field right here associated with cust account, we're storing into a variable um, for later use. So that's this first step. The next step is we need to call the method register override method. And you may have used this before um, on forms um, with chain of command before, but we're gonna call it again here. We're gonna call register override method. This takes two parameters, or, or actually I guess three parameters. The first parameter is the name of the base method that we want to override. In this case, we're gonna pass it method string form string control lookup and this is going to return um, the lookup method the second parameter we're going to pass is the name of the method we will write so method string rsm tut sys operations ui builder so the name of this class so make sure you replace this with the name of your ui builder class and then um, a made up name of our method. I'm going to call it lookup cust account because our values cust account. And you'll see where we create this method in just a second. You can name this whatever you want, but I recommend using lookup in, in the word because that'll help you remember. And then finally, we want to pass this in. So this whole class um, as a whole. And so it's really just these two lines. We're getting a reference to the dialog field. Then we're telling the system to override the lookup with our lookup. We, we can do this multiple times. So here you can see me do it again with the WMS location ID um, dialog field. And once more uh, where I override it with a method called lookup WMS location ID. I don't have to override the lookup if there's already one there. So in this case, I'm getting the dialog field, but I'm not doing anything with this um, just as an example. So now that we've added code to this post build, we've told what we've gotten the dialog field, we've told it to override the lookup, we need to actually write our lookup method. So a lookup method looks like this. Um, and if you haven't um, 
seen how to override a lookup method, you can look at my um, article called How to Override a Lookup, and it gives you some more detailed explanation of the code inside um, these lookup methods and how to write that code. Um, but essentially, it's going to look like this. We use this class called SysTableLookup. I'm not going to explain too much of it right now, but essentially, you need to pass the table that you want that drop down to show. And then in this case, this method is going to take a form string control um, and you need to pass that into this sys, uh, table lookup in, uh, constructor. Then we're going to tell it what data source it should work off of. Again, we're going to tell it the cuss table and then we can add one or more lookup fields. In this case, I'm just adding one to make it a little different, but if you wanted to specifically show certain columns for the, the purposes of this sys operation um, framework batch shop, you could do that here by adding lookup fields. Then we call Parm query, pass in the query for this data source, and call perform lookup and that actually causes that drop down to show. So just to give you another example, here's what our lookup WMS location ID looks like. Again, I'm passing it the WMS location as well as the form string control here. I'm telling it to show these three columns, WMS location ID, invent location ID, and um, location profile ID on this table and then I'm having the drop down show. And so the important thing that you need to know is that this method needs to match what you pass in right here and here. So that's it for our UI builder class. Um, but now there's still um, one more step. So if we go back to our contract class, we need to add an attribute at the top here, an attribute is the thing between square brackets, um, telling our contract class what is the related UI builder class. So I'm going to call this method sys operation contract processing, call the method class string, and then pass into it the name of you, your UI builder class. So mine's named RSM tut sys operations UI builder yours uh, likely will be named something different. So make sure you replace this with um, that name. And then that's it. So really, again, the steps are make sure you add your parameters to your contract class. Um, make sure you've got PARM methods, create your UI builder class, add your dialog fields, add the post build method, add these two lines of code to override the existing lookup method with a new lookup method, then implement your new lookup method, add it to this class, and then finally make sure you've got an attribute um, on your contract class that links this contract class back to the UI builder class. And that's it. That's how you override a lookup. Then we get these great drop downs where we can see the fields that we've specified. Um, in this case, here's one that we overrode. This one is actually the base from the extended data type. And then this one we overrode as well. And so that's why we're only seeing one column. And then from here, you can use your standard filter functionality um, by clicking a drop down and filtering on this column set a value and then click OK on your sys operation framework batch job to run it. So parameters are really helpful um, in allowing you to run your jobs on a variety of different data um, and filter what data you want it to run. Uh, overriding the lookup gives you even more controls both in what columns are showing as well as filtering the result sets of what you can uh, click on from this drops down and ensure that your users are um, picking the correct data. Okay, hopefully you learned something new today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.